Okay. So as the as we say here on the title, we're going to talk today about how Venna Solutions, a product that JMT works with, can ease your budgeting and planning woes. We're very excited about Venna Solutions here at JMT, and I'll talk a lot about that in a moment. Now, for some of you, I know we have uh, some clients who already know us very well on this call, but we also have some people who are not currently clients of JMT. So I think it's worth uh, spending a minute or two just quickly giving the background of JMT and what we're all about. In a nutshell, we were founded by a nonprofit finance professional like most of you on this call back in 1991. So next year will be our 30th anniversary. We're very excited about that. So for three decades, we've done nothing but help nonprofits. We help with primarily with implementing systems, whether they be accounting or ERP systems. We, we work with MIP Fund Accounting, with Sage Intech, for example, currently right now. We've worked with, over the years with other products. Some of you may remember uh, in the old days, a uh, tool like American Fundware we used to be a partner with. So uh, we are here as an independent firm that only works with nonprofits. We are constantly vetting the marketplace and checking out all the products that are out there. And when we see products that we think are good fit for nonprofits, we partner with them and we bring them to our clients. So Venna is one and such tool, which we're going to get into in just a moment. But as you can see, we were, you know, we're almost uh, three decades old now, and all we do is live, sleep, eat, and breathe nonprofit. Uh, just a quick second. I realized I made a little bit of a mistake here. Let me. Um, what I wanted, I, I left some other slides in from when I did this before. But uh, what I want to do now is talk about what we see as the, the your typical nonprofit budget process that we've observed over our nearly three decades of working only with nonprofits. Some back of the napkin math and just polling our clients, the average budget process from when you start it to when it ends, average, four to six months. What that means is there are some clients who are working on their budget far longer. I know one in particular who I met with who literally starts their budget process, and by the time it's over, it's good 10 months out of a 12-month year that they're in some way, shape, or form working on their budget process. So it's typically a protracted process, and it involves collaboration. But in most of our clients' cases, the collaboration that I put in quotes here is uh, essentially emailing around spreadsheets. So when in doubt, use an Oprah uh, image to get your point across. <laughs> But you know what you usually find is that a nonprofit controller or CFO is emailing spreadsheets around to different people in the organization. Everybody gets a spreadsheet, and then they email them back. So after your program managers or department heads or whoever they might be populate their own version of the spreadsheet that you sent them, they send it back to you. Of course, there may be some consultation. There may be lots of meetings. You may end up sitting and doing half the work for them. We hear that a lot. Where you know, they have the spreadsheet, but they really don't have any good information on what to populate it with. You may have some actuals in there from last year. You may not. And so there's, there's often a lot of discussion. But at the end of the day, you get these spreadsheets back, and now you are the lucky person who gets to pull it all together. Uh, I'll give you a moment to read the, the little graphic there. I won't read it out loud to you. But basically, I think – you know, we make a we we use humor to make the point here, but it's not funny at all. The idea that you might be spending 80, 90 percent of your time actually pulling data together instead of being strategic and making decisions based on the data, or working with your board or your CEO or whomever. So that's what we're interested in doing is flipping that, so that you're not spending all of your time pulling stuff together. But that's you know, back to what I'm saying about this being a nonprofit budget process that we've observed. This is, at a very high level, a uh, description of what we have seen far too many times in, our, in the organizations that we've worked with over these past three decades. And that was before the new wrinkle in the plans that we have today. And so, obviously, we are all dealing with unprecedented times. We're dealing with a crisis here. We're dealing with things that none of us have ever seen before because of the coronavirus. And, and this is when it comes to your actual job planning and forecasting and doing the books for a nonprofit organization, it's almost like that entire process that we just described that can be four to six months or longer is completely different now. So how, after all of that, how do you now recast your budget in light of what's going on in the world around us? This is the kind of thing we've been hearing over the last few months. 
your board or your CEO needs a new plan and they need it now. Frankly, here at JMT, we had to have a new plan and we had to have it quickly. Every business, whether for-profit or non-profit, is going through that right now. Hopefully, a lot of us, now that COVID's been going on for a month or two, are, have a little bit more of our feet underneath us, but even so, data details are changing on an almost hourly basis. There were a couple of days, a week or maybe a month ago, there were a couple of days there where great news came out, like government, uh, the government uh, announced some uh, money and funds available even for nonprofits. Well, that's good news, but that means you now have to take all that good news and recast it in your plan. So here we are facing a, a, the need to quickly change the previous assumptions that you, that you use to build out your plan and your budget. You, you also are trying to collaborate with a workforce who is suddenly remote, and you really just don't want to have to waste your time on data collection and entry in this rapidly changing world where everything is going so fast. You want to be able to make strategic decisions and recommendations on that data, not spend your time pulling it together. And unfortunately, we're hearing just when you've done all that, you may have to do it yet again because things are changing so quickly. So I realize that may sound familiar to a lot of you, and this is what we're trying to help you with right now at JMT. Uh, the point I make here is, you know, you're trying to collaborate with people and you're doing it all from your new office. I'm calling you from a bedroom in my home right now, as a matter of fact, as most of you are probably in your, in your homes. Uh, and so you're collaborating with coworkers who have an office that may look like this. If you have any in uh, New York City, for example, this is a huge apartment for New York City standards. But uh, you get the idea. We are dealing with collaboration with each other that is far more challenging than it has ever been before. And you may even have some new coworkers you didn't realize you were going to have. So we, this is a reality for a lot of us here at JMT. I, one of my colleagues has a three-year-old and his wife is an essential worker and their daycare is closed down. So he's literally got the three-year-old in the lap most of the day, except during nap time. So we know that this is the reality and we're trying to collaborate with each other and still get work done in spite of this new reality. But to that I say, no problem, because we do have a tool like Venna, the Venna FP&A cloud as they call it. And I'm gonna sum up JMT's uh, decision to partner with Venna with, with basically saying, it keeps all the good things about Excel, but gets rid of the bad stuff. Everybody knows how to use Excel, in finance anyway. Every nonprofit finance professional knows how to use Excel. I've joked in the past that the good news is if God forbid you lost your job tomorrow, you could probably get a job teaching people how to use Excel because I've seen some pretty awesome spreadsheets among nonprofit finance pro professionals over the years. But basically we get rid of the bad stuff of Excel, the formula errors, the lack of data integrity, the versions floating around. And that's what Venna does here. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more about that in just a moment. It also makes it very easy for you to collaborate because you're able to actually create process managers like what you see on the screenshot here. This is literally a budget process that you would see in the Venna solution and outlining it for your team and then tying it to tasks and task management. So you can see the, the actual uh, you can see the actual progress of where they are in their uh, in the in the process, and at the end of the day, it will allow you to actually spend your time reporting and making decisions on it. And this is an example of some of the reports that you would see in the Venna tool. So, right now, I'm going to transition over, and I'm going to actually open up Venna. And pardon me while I quickly pull that up. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna ask Megan to do our first poll of the day. We have, a, we have a poll that we're doing and we are, this first poll has to do with spreadsheet usage. So Megan, do you wanna, do you wanna introduce this poll and, and ask people to yeah, vote on thanks, it? Yeah, thanks Angie. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you so much. So I'm gonna launch a poll here so you should See it come up on your screen here in a second. If you could just take some time to answer that, um, I'll give everyone a minute to get that answered. So I'm going to launch it now. And you should see it on your screen here. So if you can just take a minute to um, vote on those, um, we'll give everyone a minute. Um, I can kind of track progress of 
Um, how many votes have come in? So we'll give everyone a minute to get that answered. And by, by to clarify the question, what we mean is how many actual worksheets, even if it is only one workbook, how many actual individual sheets are there in your budget? Just kind of a fun thing. I've seen some big ones. Maybe you're lucky. Maybe you're in the zero to five range. I don't believe this shows anything like who answered what, right? Megan is just giving the answers. Um, I'll see after I end. I may be able to share results anonymously here, but we are getting answers in. Um, overwhelmingly, we do have 20 to 30 is our overwhelming answer here. Um, with wow. We even have a couple of 50 plus, um, 30 to 40 is pretty popular, um, as well as 5 to 10. We currently don't have any 0 to 5 answers. Wow, okay. Well, we'll keep, keep that poll open, and I, we're going to do another one here in just a minute. So let me make sure that I am showing again the correct screen. You see my Venna tab open, Megan? Can you confirm that? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, great. So what you may have noticed is I'm logged in in a website, in a browser, because Venna is a cloud tool. It uses Excel, and I'll explain how in a moment, but you go to the Venna, I just, I'm using Google Chrome, so that's what I used here. I logged in. I have a fake database set up for me to play around in, in demos. And this is uh, the Venna, one of the Venna interfaces that I'm going to show you. But what I want to do now is illustrate for you how, with a very simple example, how this collaboration works. So what we have here is we have some templates that are created. Um, and, and again, these are just I've, a very simplified database just to illustrate the point here. But I'm going to start with, we call it our detailed OPEX input. And what you notice is it asks me to check out. And what it's going to do is it's think of it like going to the library, is I'm going to check out this sheet. And when I do, that means no one else can touch it. It's not checked in. And when I check it out, what it's going to do is pull actual data from the Venna Cloud database, populate an, an Excel template, so that essentially your Excel template is nothing more than sort of the front end for where you enter data. But on the back end, it is actually tied to the Venna Cloud, which has data integrity. So I would use the example of just as I'm on a website right now where I might have data that I could enter, the website's front end just happens to be a browser window that ties to whatever database is on the back end of your tool. Like if you're buying something on a website online, the front end is just where you type your numbers in, but the back end there is a secure database somewhere owned by that provider, right? So it's the same thing here. The difference is the entry input, input template is an Excel sheet. So I'll go ahead and check one out. That's what this one is here. It's simply you'll notice it's downloading down here in the bottom. It's done. I'll open it up. And when I do, it is actually populating this Excel template with data, as it's showing you right there, from their database, from the Venna database. Now, in my d demo system, I've got dimensions. Some of you who use Sage Intact are probably very familiar with the idea of dimensions. But in this case, I need to choose the correct dimensions. And I'm going to choose San Francisco for the purposes of my demo. And I'm going to choose this as my forecast scenario for what I want to do. So when I do that, it's now further loading. And now it's giving me an input template. Now again, this is Excel. And if you notice, it really is Microsoft Excel. The only difference is there's this tab up here, this Venna tab, which adds all this additional functionality that is related to how it ties into the back end of, of Venna. But let's say, back to the example I gave earlier, let's say you are a CFO or a controller or whoever it is in your nonprofit organization who's in charge of sort of making sure people get their budgets done and making sure program managers or whoever it might be are contributing their numbers. So I'm going to just go through a simple example. Think about what I said about how you email somebody something, you ask them to populate an Excel template, email it back to you. Well, instead, that person could log in as a contributor in Venna and come down here and enter data. What you might notice is obviously some of these jump out at you. They're in blue. And then there are other ones that are not in blue. The ones in blue are the ones that can be changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add a number. For, the, for simplicity purposes, I'm going to just pick this open cell here, which I deliberately left open so that it shows easily in a demo. But imagine I have to put in recruitment expenses for November of 21, and I'll just say, uh, I don't know, 
let's just say 21,000, 21, or I hit 24,000, didn't I? 24,211. So I've entered that data. It is now my number for that month. Very simplistic example, but I think you get the idea. So now, let's say I've done all of these numbers and I've been populating them all, but I simply save it, close it, and I'm done. Now I can either save the data here, which will save it to the Venna Cloud, or even if I try to just go out of the spreadsheet, it's going to prompt me. This file is controlled. Do you want to save the data? Yes, I do. It's now probably going to give me a warning. Yes, it is, because we have set up budget controls. If you exceed a threshold of 20% increase, you have to add value, adjust the values or add a comment. Now, this is a soft warning, not a prohibitive uh, situation. So what I want to do here is I want to, whoops, I'm going to hit don't save. And I'm going to go back for a second. Well, I screwed it all up. Well, sorry about that, folks, but that was user error on my part. Let me go back and check that back out. Well, it's going to ask me to check it in. Now check it back out. I was going to show you how I could enter a comment, and I thought if I closed those other windows that it would uh, that I would show that, but I accidentally closed the whole thing first. Sorry about that, but no problem. We'll just go right back to it. It's going to ask me to do the same thing, load the data, and I'm going to pick my same value, San Francisco, forecast. This time, I'll just put the comment in before I try to save it. So let's say I'm going to add a number here, and I'm going to say, because I want to. I don't know why. That's just what's in my mind. Uh, it's a demo database. I could say things like that. So we're just going to put in a number again, whatever, 21452. I don't remember what it was. Hit enter. And now I'm going to save. Do I want to save the vendor database? Yes, I do. It's saving it. Yes, I do want to continue. It's actually saving the changes to the audit trail, and I'm saying, yes, I want to check this file in. So now I go back into the Venna Cloud, and you can see that it, that file has been checked back in. But let's say I want to actually go look at now I'm the actual, instead of thinking of, I, I'm, that was like a program manager out in the field or in their small New York City apartment entering data. But now I'm back, I'm the finance director, the program manager, or the uh, CFO or the director of finance, whatever I might be, the person who owns the budget. And I want to see my budget as it's coming together, which will include the input of the um, managers, like what I just did. So I'm going to go to this report to illustrate it. This is an expense variance analysis report, same thing. It's just simply populating an Excel template with data from the Venna cloud. And when I pull that up, you'll see a couple things. I'm going to leave this at those values. And you notice, A, this is another good thing about spreadsheets. One time I had a colleague who said, Excel is really the best desktop publishing tool around. And it truly is. We all know we can do really cool things with charts and graphs in Excel. Well, since we're using Excel here, you see I've got some charts and graphs that are populating the data. But it's pulling, it has data integrity, it's pulling from a database. So if I go down here to find my recruiting expense, I think that's what I said I was doing it, wasn't I? Well, here it is. Here's that number that I entered in that other sheet and has showed up over here in this report because that, that updates real time to the database. So imagine how difficult this would have been. Imagine that there are you know, 20 departments or 30 departments that all were entering a recruitment expense for the month of November and how difficult that would be for you to have to piece all of those different spreadsheets together just for this one value, not to mention the hundreds of other cells on this sheet. So I hope that that gets the general point across in terms of how the data integrity is maintained with a tool like Venna, how easy this can be. Now, Venna can do a lot more than what I've shown here today in this brief half hour that we have together, but this, this is something that I think uh, this is really the biggest value in terms of quick time savings that we see for our clients who want to use a tool. There are some other things, though, which are worth showing. So notice I'm highlighted on this cell 
and I want to look at the saves behind it. I can drill into it. It's actually showing what happened today. This is like an audit trail. It's actually showing it created a new tab on this, this report that shows that change that I just made. Furthermore, if I want to go to a different cell, let me just highlight this one. Um, actually, I'm going to go up to consulting fees because I know there's data in this. Let's say I highlight this cell and I want to see some more. This tool can be integrated with your general ledger, and we can pull in actuals from your actual general ledger and show you what makes up these numbers. These are actual transactions and invoices from the GL that are you can drill right to from a cell in a Venna workbook. So I'm sure you see the value of that. So many of our clients are using Intact or MIP or anything like that. Essentially, we can integrate Venna with anything. Some of them, like Sage Intact, are particularly have already built a pre-built bridge where, where the data flows over smoothly. But your actuals are there. They can populate these templates, which can then be used to build out your budget, which is a very another extremely powerful tool. The final thing I want to show you here today in the brief time that we have is just coming back over to, I gave you a screenshot earlier, but if I come over to this manager view, I can come down here and look at a few different things. If I go to nonprofit, I'll just go to this one here. This is an example of the workflow of our nonprofit budget process that you can outline and create when you're creating your budget process at the beginning. But furthermore, you can actually check status here. So I can see all the tasks that are out there and the status of them, what's going on with them. And essentially, I can check on the people who are supposed to be doing stuff for me in this process and see whether they've done it or not. So this is a great way to give you peace of mind knowing that you are collaborating with staff who are out and about living in apartments or houses and working from home. Uh, this is an easier way to keep track of how everything is going. You're not, you don't have the luxury of walking down the hall and asking people about it as you could when you were all in the office together. This is one way to do that through a status tracker. There are many, basically any Excel-based process you can think of can be used and created in Venna even things that have nothing to do with budgeting and planning, like one that we've seen some of our clients use a lot is close management. Maybe you have a monthly close process and you want to document that and have a whole workflow. You can use the Venna tool for that as well. So the, back to the, I want to conclude by coming back to a couple points. You know, we're, I said earlier about flipping uh, can you confirm, Megan, that you see this PowerPoint? Yes, I can, Andy. Okay, great. Thank you. Full disclosure, I'm fairly new to Zoom, and I sometimes accidentally am not sharing when I think I am. Thank you for making sure I was. Okay, so but we want to make sure that you are spending 80% of your time being strategic and not 80% of your time or more pulling stuff together. I hope you've seen a very simple example today that can open your eyes to the possibilities of how the Venna tool might help you. Therefore, none of your time is spent on all these other crazy things, looking for formula errors, checking on the progress. And most importantly, you don't have to tell your executive director or your board, uh, I don't have that for you yet. Hold on. I'm still pulling it all together. And that's really the goal here. Um, and so what we've done at JMT to try to make this a reality for all of you is we realize that, you know, normally we would have implemented a tool like this prior to COVID. And typically it takes a couple months to get it up and running to, to configure your every all the models you might want. We might build out quite a few different models and templates. And then most importantly, train you on how to administer your own model and, and so that you can learn how to build more and 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 use and do more than just be an enterer of data, but actually own the tool and build out the templates. But that takes time. And in this era of COVID, you don't have that time. We're working with someone right now who in fact uh, possibly while we've been on this call has, has uh, already given me the green light, but he wants to move forward with Venna, but he doesn't have time to learn it right now. He feels like six or eight months from now, he can come up for air and do it then. So we've come up with a way that our clients can get into Venna for a monthly fee, no amount of money up front except for the, the monthly amount. And you're essentially outsourcing the administration of the model to us for now. 
you could keep doing that forever or you could say, hey, six, eight months from now, I'm going to be ready for a detailed uh, you know, training session where I learn how to do this myself. But in the short term, I can use the tool, I can benefit from it, and I can have a, a plan that we can work from in 10 days because JMT can have you up and running on this tool with that model in 10 days. To be clear, it is not going to be a fully built out model with every type of scenario planning that you can imagine as it would be if you did a full implementation. But the trade-off is you can be up and running quickly and there's nothing that stops you from doing the rest of a more full implementation later. So this can be your reality. Literally, by Memorial Day, this could be you. You could be relaxed, not worried about pulling spreadsheets together. So this, again, we designed this as a very high-level view. We hope you've seen enough that you at least can envision that perhaps this tool would be something that would be of value to you. We wouldn't expect that from this 30-minute session today, you're necessarily ready to sign up right away. But if you are interested in having a more personal discussion about this and what we might call a deep dive, we would love to know. So I believe, Megan, with that is the um, final poll question. Yeah, thanks, Andy. So I'm going to go ahead and um, launch our final poll question. It's just going to give us kind of a better idea about how you'd best like to be followed up with. So I'll go ahead and launch that um, for us here so you should see it. And while we're kind of getting votes in, we'll kind of move to a couple questions we had, Andy, if that's okay with you in our final couple minutes here. Um, but someone did ask, and you kind of talked about it a little bit after the question was submitted, but just they were just kind of asking how much is the cost, what's the cost per user, um, and, and is there an implementation cost associated with the services? Okay. so. Yes, there are, and the user cost depends on a few variables. The type of user and as well as your organization's size, they do have tiered pricing that is different based on, you know, how big your organization is. In other words, if you're a $100 million nonprofit, the price is a little higher than if you're a $5 million nonprofit. They just have price tiers based on that. So we can have a personal discussion with anybody here and ballpark that pricing for you very quickly. Um, so I don't want to be evasive about that answer, but you understand there's a few details that we would need to know. Uh, secondly, what was the second part of that question? Is it, is it was it about? Yeah, it, I, I see one in, in writing about is this cloud-based MIP. Yeah, that's another question that we had. So another question is: is this only for cloud-based MIP? The answer is no. This is for anything. It, it is completely does not matter what your ERP or accounting software is. So. We at JMT, we work with MIP and we work with Sage Intact, but we have clients who are on Venna who use ERPs that we don't support. It doesn't matter what your ERP is. We can get actual data out of your ERP and we can pull it into Venna. Even if it's a, just a quick import process, uh, we can do it. So it doesn't matter what your ERP is. The next question I see is, does the Venna budget software allow budget allocation? Absolutely yes. And in fact, I'm glad you asked that question because that is – one huge reason why JMT chose to partner with Venna, because working only with nonprofits, that is one of the most important aspects of the average nonprofit budgeting process. We have worked with other FP&A tools, which is what Venna is called. One in particular that we used to partner with a lot more, they have allocations, but they're extremely rigid, difficult to work with, and every time you, you make one, if you want to change it next month, it's really difficult. We found a lot of the end users were having to call for help because the allocations are dynamic and they're changing a lot. And so we are, uh, we were really thrilled with how easy that allocation process is in the Venna tool. Uh, see another question. <laughs> I love this question. If so, it's affordable and quick to get going. What's next step? Next step is we'd want to have a personal conversation with anybody who does want to want to go further. Um, and obviously I think Megan here has a, poll and we'll know. And we do, in all sincerity, we really want to know. Some people come to a webinar like this, they find it to be interesting information, but yeah, they, they just don't have time to get into a conversation. We understand. We don't want to bother you, so that's why you tell us how you feel about us following up and we will respect that. And for anyone who really does want to know about next steps, we'll be in touch very shortly. Right, am I yeah, missing I any other questions, Megan? Uh, I think that is the last question that came through, and I know we're a couple minutes over time here, so if I do see any more questions come across, I'll uh, take note of those, and we'll make sure we reach out to you um, with the answers for those individually. I don't want to take up too much of people's time here, but thank you so much, Andy, for giving us that very high-level but very, very um, informative overview of our Vena Crisis Planning Services. I appreciate it. 
Um, just wanted to remind everyone that we will send the slides and the recording for this webinar um, within 24 hours um, after we end here today. So you'll watch out for those. You should be getting those in your email. Um, and then we just want to thank everyone for coming um, and listening to this today. We really appreciate it. Um, we hope you join us for future events and webinars in the future. You can find out about those by um, going on our website at jmtconsulting.com, clicking on the events tab, and you should see the webinar show up there. We've really been trying to step up a lot of our webinar content um, during this time. So we really do hope that you join us for those in the future. Um, and then Andy, if there's anything else you'd like to add um, before we close out here. I just echo your your thanks to everyone for joining us, and I know this these are crazy times, and I can assure you that at JMT, you know, our founding vision was to do everything we can to support nonprofits, and it couldn't be more true, uh, or it, it is more true, I should say, today than it ever has been before. We want to help you. We believe this is something that can help you get through not only this crisis, but get to the end of it so that you're in a really good position moving, emerging from whenever this uh, craziness subsides. So thank you all. We really hope uh, that you have a great rest of your day and that uh, that you're all getting through this thing okay. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. We hope everyone has a great rest of the day. All right, bye. Take care.